Hello. Thanks for showing up anyway. Uh, apparently today is a Swiss National Day, which is very appropriate because my talk is very cheesy and it's full of holes. <laughs> so, uh, this is the short title. The, this is the full title, but uh, it's not really about begging. It's about helping. Um, nobody on this planet, especially not in this room, believes that money is everything. Even if they say so, even if they think they believe it. So, to different degrees, we are all looking to help other people. And this is a stratagem that I realized recently. Uh, and it's uh, also a way to reconcile. But first things first, this is a font conference, let's do what we care about first. Color font. Um, this is a very interesting font. Do you see the red arrow? Yeah. Are you, you sure? I, I don't want you to miss it. So, <laughs> so the, the font on top is uh, Munster. It's called, it means pattern in Norwegian. Um, it's also kind of monstrous. And it's by the Monochrome Foundry, one of my favorite little font foundries in uh, Norway. Um, designed by uh, Sindre Bremnes. And uh, this font is Trilby by uh, David Jonathan Ross. Uh, it's kind of a, uh, you've probably noticed by now that these are reverse contrast, reverse contrast fonts. And um, I use them for this talk because it's my only hope of being trendy. But no, actually I use them because uh, they kind of allude to um, non-Latin scripts. Uh, and after I made this slide, I realized, you know, maybe this is better. Anyway, so the, uh, this is my uh, best attempt at humor. The rest of the talk is very serious. <laughs> so uh, intellectual property uh, divides people, uh, especially the last, I don't know, 20 years. Um, there are many people who think that it shouldn't be a property that you can own. Those are obviously the ones on the left. And uh, then there are people who create something and they treat it almost too preciously. And um, the problem isn't that these opinions exist. The problem is that uh, it's a, there's a reverse bell curve. Well, I told you it's going to be cheesy, you didn't believe me. There's a, there's a reverse bell curve and uh, it doesn't work. You can see it's cracked. The reverse bell curve doesn't work because there's no dialogue. It's just people at each end throwing things at each other. And um, I realized uh, recently, like I said, that um, there is a sort of a fruitful middle ground. And I don't know how I got myself in this position. Mostly I just want people to get along. But, or it could be that I just want to have as many people to disagree with as possible. <laughs> but um, my purpose is to show that there is a fruit from middle ground. And if you notice, those are all exotic fruits. They're are, they are non-Latin fruits. <laughs> and uh, that's because, honestly, I'm not sure how Libre is useful culturally to Latin, but there is some secret there that makes it very useful to non-Latins. Um, and um, a little bit about my culture first. This is our official fruit, pomegranate, um, Armenian. And uh, it's not just Armenians that this is relevant to. I think most cultures share things that are not part of Latin culture. I'll detail that later. But uh, this is a typical uh, Armenian font. <laughs> this used to be called Ariel uh, Armenian. And the, the reason it was called Ariel Armenian is because the person took Ariel and uh, took the outlines, copy pasted, and which is the usual modus operandum. And he made the uh, Armenian font and he distributed it. This is before Armenia was, became on the radar of copyright people. And, um, but this person, Ruben Tarumian, is actually one of the heroes of uh, Armenian font intellectual property because he successfully sued uh, somebody in Armenia 
uh, because he was using the funds, I think he was reselling them, I'm not even sure, but he, was, he remains very proud that he won a lawsuit in Armenia for fund protection for the total amount of $1,000. Uh, which is nothing compared to how much work he had done on it. Uh, but my point is that the, the reason this happened is because many cultures, even more than here, don't value plants as something you have to buy. They don't value them as intellectual property. Um, here's a, something from last year in the uh, a private school in uh, Hollywood. This is, um, they used four fonts. It's for, a, and this is the Armenian version. There's one font. That's not because they didn't want to. They did. Look, there's four fonts on the English one. But, uh, and this is a font that's uh, one of uh, years truly made this in 1998, and it's still being used. Um, so, and I'm not advocating this. This is an actual, I didn't make this up. This is a restaurant in Glendale. And, uh, <laughs> I'm not advocating this, but there is a desire in this case, and in many cases, to use more fonts, and they're just not there. And the reason they're not there is partly because Armenians don't like to pay for fonts, and that's true of most cultures, uh, but it's also because there aren't any out there. And it's not just the fonts that are on your system. The font, in this case, is not on the system. You have to download it. Um, it's the fact that there just aren't enough. And the, many of the ones that are out there don't look right. Uh, they were made uh, as a necessity, and some of the letters are wrong. And they're legible, but an Armenian looking at them will realize, oh, this was an Odar, non-Armenian who made this. Um, now, um, one of the reasons uh, Armenian fonts don't exist in enough numbers even though we have a great respect for our alphabet, we, re we really venerate it, um, is that it's expected to have an English companion, a Latin companion. And it's not easy to make a Latin font. It's easy to, my favorite expression is, this is the, uh, it's never been easier to start a typeface and it's never been more difficult to finish a typeface. There are so many things that uh, have to be added in there especially character sets. And every year Unicode adds new things. And um, it's really gotten out of hand. So this is a, a, a proposed character. Uh, here's another one. And uh, here's another one. Alternate universe. <laughs> and uh, if this, if this goes on, we're going to end up with, you know, smileys even in the Unicode, right? So, <laughs> and they're there. Look at that Unicode number on the right side. So, um, and uh, this, I'm not making this up. So, um, it's, it's a lot. And it takes time. If you want to do a good job, it takes a long time. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a labor of love, but you're not going to... You know, we don't want a Romeo and Juliet the tragic death here, you know. Uh, love, love, it's not that love has its limits, it's, it's love has a place in life, and there are other things to worry about too. Uh, this is from yesterday. Um, Dave Crossland started uh, asking, a, not, not a, I wouldn't call this a rhetorical question, this is a, more of a question that's fishing for answers, which is my favorite kind. And uh, Bruno Mag, who's the principal of uh, Dalton Mag Foundry, which is probably the biggest uh, non-Latin font house out there, said they are not unless they start paying for it. Now, who is they, the second they? Who is they? Who's going to pay for this? Uh, is it Armenians, who individual Armenians? For example, in the case of Armenian, I'm just using that as an example. Uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, the, the, there is a they that pays for these things, and uh, my clients are all they. They are companies. They're not owned by Armenians. There's no Armenians working there. They want to do business in Armenia. So they pay somebody to either fix the Armenian they uh, put together or uh, to make one from scratch. Um, so 
what's interesting is that the people benefiting culturally are not the ones paying for it. And that's okay by me. That's a very elegant solution. So the, the they is not one thing. So there are people benefiting, but they don't have to pay for it. That's okay. They're benefiting, and the right people are paying for it. Um, and, but the problem is still there because of, it's a really, it's a very big task to um, design an Armenian, to design a Latin font. Um, now, why don't, uh, why don't we let non-Armenians design Armenian fonts? For example, why don't we let, um, um, it's not that we don't let, but what's the problem if uh, a non-Latin font is designed by somebody who's not what I call a native, that's not a pejorative term. Native is uh, somebody who has um, early exposure, and I get a lot of flack for this, but I believe in, uh, I believe in puberty. I believe that uh, puberty is a very big deal. And um, whatever you're exposed to before that is when, is when you're learning. After that, there's a transition, and after that, you move to doing. And you do things based on what you learned. If you don't have exposure to something before a certain age, that's pretty early, uh, you will, it's, you're very unlikely to have nativity in it. It's not a Christian thing. Nativity means a native ability. For example, um, if you grow up in uh, uh, Lebanon, you will have nativity in Arabic and Latin. If you're an Armenian who grows up in Lebanon, you will have nativity in three scripts. Uh, later on, even if you're not a type designer, if somebody shows you a, a font in Arabic or Latin or Armenian and, there's, and it gives you the wrong feeling, you will know. You will not be, maybe be able to put your finger on what's wrong with it, but you will be able to tell the person this, is, this isn't right. And this is a feeling that the person asking you who doesn't have nativity will not feel because it's not in there. It's in the conscious layer and it's not native, it's learned. Uh, a lot of uh, very capable, very dedicated type designers have made very poor non-Latin fonts for this reason. And uh, these days it's better People, people have the humility to ask for help. Um, they even pay money to get proper consulting on something. They, they might not agree with the, this view of nativity, but they do realize that they just can't do it by themselves. So it's nice when a non-Latin font is designed by a native. Uh, ethnic ethics is not like Disney Channel. On the Disney Channel, people make a mistake, and then they apologize, and then they do the right thing, and everything is fine. Okay. That's not how, uh, unfortunately, that's not how uh, most of the world works in terms of intellectual property and fonts in particular. Uh, it, it's uh, sad to say that it's almost a matter of principle not to pay for a font in many cultures. And uh, again, the saving grace is that they don't have to pay to benefit. Companies who are hoping to make money off of them can pay and they will benefit culturally because they will have better typography in a small way. This is also our small world that we have to make better. Um, there is a difference uh, between Western and non-Western respect of intellectual property. Uh, here's the cruncher. That a lot of people who make non-Latin fonts do it because it's, a, like I said, labor of love. It, they love their culture. It's not just that they like to make shapes. They want shapes to be useful. When uh, uh, my brother and I made uh, Armenian fonts on the Commodore 64 in 1983, it was simply because it wasn't available. And we wanted to express our culture on this thing, on this device. And that can migrate into making high quality fonts for other Armenians or other people to use. The problem is, if, uh, if the strain becomes too much, if you're dedicating hours of the day and, you're, uh, and your wife is looking at you and she's saying, why, why are you doing that? 
And uh, if she asks you, you know, how many copies of this have you sold? And you say, well, I might sell one this year. That's not going to fly. So you have to be able to accommodate the real life. Uh, you can't be altruistic. You can't say, oh, people should be so dedicated that they do it for free all of the time. Some people will, that's great, but our, our reality isn't like that. So they can give up, so they can realize, okay, this isn't going to work. I can't pay for my kid's college if I spend my time doing fonts. And they'll just stop. And then years later, you know, at a family for dinner, the, an in-law will say, hey, Hagop, didn't you used to make fonts, you know, for I mean, well, Yeah, that, that was fine. And they'll just laugh it off. And that's where it'll end. Um, so a day job, which is what most people have, obstructs the design of a very large Latin companion. So this is kind of the key moment here that I realized that uh, Libre fonts um, offer a choice, but this is the problem. The problem is the OFL license, which has very good intentions, uh, does not click with the reality in non-Latin type design. Um, there, most people don't know this. I'll explain it quickly. Um, the OFL license allows you, Libre fonts allow you to redistribute, modify, redistribute. Um, they don't allow you to make money off of it. And that sounds very nice. But it's the kind of thing I like hearing. But because it ties your hands in that way, the only way is if you do it unethically, and I don't want to encourage that, the, it's, you have to give it away because it was free to begin with. Um, and that's a deal breaker. That's the problem. That ends up harming these cultures that you're supposedly worried about social justice, but in, in the end, it won't happen. Uh, the, the Apache license, not my favorite name for it, but the Apache license is more inclusive. It's almost, uh, it sounds like it doesn't care, but and maybe that's what it was at first. But to me, the Apache license cares about human nature enough that it allows people, if they want, to make money off of it. Uh, Apache still allows designers to give it away. And if there is a free version of what you're trying to sell, people can go get it. It's not like there is a, you know, it's not, it's not like it's difficult to find information on the web you know, or any, anywhere else these days. So it's not some evil thing to take an Apache font and try to make money by selling a derivative. For example, you take a Latin font that has 3,000 characters because somebody was paid at his day job to do that and release it as a Libre font and under the Apache license, you can add an Armenian to it, sell it, maybe a client can commission it, or uh, you can sell it, and the beneficiaries will be end users. And you do this because you can't do it for free. So you cannot force people to make, to give away their expertise because you think they should. Some will, and that's great. Other people, it just won't fit in their lifestyle, and I think this is the majority of non-Latin, non-Western type designers who are not living here in the West. Um, but you can leave the door open. And um, one uh, nice thing is uh, Adobe uh, Source Saw now has an Apache version, which was very encouraging to see. And um, we're in this together. Um, Let's help each other contribute to type in uh, as many ways as we can. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll uh, take your questions and ridicule during the coffee break. Thank you.